Hello and happy holidays! If you're new around here, my name's Gracie and I like to sew 18th century clothes, among other things, and I make videos about it. If you've watched some of my content before, you might have noticed that I have been taking a little break from making videos. That is because I have been super busy with my real job and I've not had time to work on this. But I wanted to make a little holiday video about making some 18th century inspired holiday gifts. Um, and it'll be a Christmas miracle if this comes out before the 25th. Um, it's currently the 23rd and I had my wisdom teeth out yesterday so if I sound a little weird or if my cheeks look swollen that's why. Um, and I have not actually finished making the projects we're going to talk about in this video. So this is more likely to come out, gonna come out on Christmas Day so probably won't be very useful <laughs> if you're looking to make a gift for somebody but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make two 18th century inspired objects that I think make really good gifts. The first is going to be an 18th century inspired necklace. First of all, I am not a jewelry historian. Most of my research for this project was done by looking at images and looking at extant examples of necklaces. But you see people of lots of different social classes wearing very simple beaded necklaces in the 18th century and in the early 19th century as well. And I have a Pinterest board that I'll link down below with some of my inspiration images so you can see the things that I am thinking of. But it seems like these jewel these necklaces were fairly common, um, often just like a single strand of beads. Sometimes the beads look kind of large, maybe the size of like your thumbnail, and sometimes they look much smaller. And so this is the first project in this will be my take on that style of necklace. And the second project in this video will be how to make an 18th century neckerchief. And these are fairly universal in the 18th century Atlantic world. Um, people of all genders, all social classes, all races are seen wearing them in a multitude of different styles. I'll link a couple more videos below about the research that people have done into 18th century neckerchiefs. If I'm remembering correctly, Cheney McKnight of Not Your Mama's History has a video on black women in the 18th century 18th century Atlantic world and how they wore neckerchiefs as head wraps and I think that's super interesting so I'll link that below so you can learn about that too. Um, but the neckerchief that I'm gonna make is extremely versatile. You can use it for multiple different time periods. You could make one in a fun fabric for a modern day handkerchief. It's basically just a hemmed square of fabric um, but using 18th century techniques so it can be historical if you so choose. Um, and yeah, those are the two projects we're going to be making, and I think they both make pretty cute gifts. And I hope you do too, and I hope you enjoy this video. So let's get to the projecting! <laughs> the materials you'll need to make a necklace are some small round beads, such as these ceramic spherical beads which mimic the color of coral jewelry in 18th century art. You could also use glass or plastic pearls or anything else that suits your fancy. You'll also need some beading wire, some small pliers, and hardware. I used a toggle clasp, two crimp beads, and two little metal beads at the start and end of my necklace. You may also want to use small metallic beads to space out your main beads. I mocked up the desired length of my necklace with a piece of yarn, which I then used to measure out the length of beading wire that I would need. The next step is attaching the clasp to the wire. If you've never done this before, it isn't that difficult. All you need to do is thread your wire through a crimp bead, then through your clasp, then back through the crimp bead, which you will then flatten with a pair of pliers, securing the clasp to the wire. Once the clasp was secured, I added a metal bead to start my necklace. This isn't entirely necessary, but I feel like it makes the necklace look nice at the start and end. Then, I threaded beads onto my wire until the necklace was my desired length. The final step in making this necklace was finishing it the way it had started, with a metal bead and then a clasp and crimp bead to hold it all in place. The end of the wire was threaded through a crimp bead, then the clasp, then back through the crimp bead, then through a few of the main beads of the necklace. This was extremely fiddly, especially getting the end of the wire back through some of the main beads, because I should have left a longer tail of wire, but it isn't actually that difficult. The final result is a necklace that closes with a toggle clasp and is a reasonable facsimile of the necklaces we saw at the start of the video.
To make a neckerchief, you'll need about a yard of fabric. In the 18th century, fine cottons imported from India were common, often with colorful prints, as were linen, silk gauze, and even gauzy wool. I'm using a finely woven cotton with a spotted pattern. First, I cut a square yard of fabric. An even square will make a neckerchief that folds nicely. After I pressed my square, I basted the hem all around the edges. For a fine hem, I recommend basting the first fold of the hem by finger pressing the edge under before securing it with loose stitches. The actual hem was sewn with a whip stitch in fine linen thread coated in wax. Hemming like this isn't difficult, it's just time consuming, so sit down with a cup of tea and a good podcast for a relaxing afternoon of sewing. One way to make the hemming go faster is to pin your neckerchief into something solid, like a tailor's ham. If you sew in the direction away from the pin that's anchoring your fabric, you don't need to create tension on the fabric yourself, which eases the burden on your hands and makes the process go faster. Both the neckerchief and necklace were fairly quick projects, and I'm quite happy with the results. Here, you can see how large the neckerchief really is. I gave the first necklace to a friend before I could get any footage of it, but I made a second one in about half an hour so I could show you what it looks like up close. As you can see, this is a fairly basic necklace, but I think it's pretty cute. As always, feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And I hope that you have a restful remainder of 2021. Merry Christmas if you celebrate and thank you for watching. Thank you.